My name is Yao Ofusulabi. Now, uh, we're only a few days away now. Uh, the GFA elections is uh, later this week, and we're continuing our coverage of uh, the build-up uh, up until the elections. And this morning, I have an astute football man here with me. He was a former ESCO member at the Ghana Football Association and also worked with the Black Starlets as the uh, management committee chairman uh, in the lawyer. Kwe Kwe is my guest this morning here on the show and he's trying to get onto the executive council of the Ghana Football Association. Lawyer, you're welcome this morning. Thank you. Now, lawyer, first of all, um, what, are your, what are your plans, generally, uh, the, the outline for uh, the executive council when you get in? Wow, thank you for having me, but it's like you're jumping the gun. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> yes, <please. laughs> yeah. if I get it, yeah. yeah, what are my plans? Okay, I think um, I need to get there first yeah. before I the plans. Yeah. Now, um, I have been privileged to serve on the executive committee. Right. Now, proposed as the executive council from 2011 until 2018 when our tenure was truncated. Okay. Uh, I learned a lot of lessons there mm -hmm. and these are lessons which will guide me going forward. So, once there, I believe strongly that what I have to do is to bring my experience on board, right. bring my institutional memory, because most of the laws at the FE were passed for certain reasons. Okay. So if you have an old order, you don't do away with the entire old order. Yeah. You do away with some, you maintain some. Yeah. In maintaining some, I believe you have to look at the people with the track record, people who have excelled in the given area they were tied to, and their general contribution at the executive uh, committee then, mm -hmm. now executive council mm -hmm. level. So I, I intend uh, to forcefully push for the agenda of Division One as to how we can market Division One as a brand. Because for most people, they see Division One as a wilderness. Mm -hmm. So Division One is like you get away to Premier and yeah. you forget. Exactly. Incidentally, I'm the only person among the lot who have been with Division One since 2001. Right. Uh, but different clubs. It used to be um, Takwa United. Now I'm a proud, United, proud United. Now I'm with Proud United. Yeah. So I'm the only one among the lot who have perpetually been at Division One. Mm -hmm. I know the problems attributed to Division One, and I know how best we we have to we can resolve it, especially how to market ourselves, assuming certain things off, and then also the next thing dear to me is youth football. Like you mentioned, I've been with the under 17. Yeah. I went on a nationwide tour. Exactly. We instituted the under 15 to get a certain progression mm -hmm. through that experience. Yeah. I realized the huge potential we had at the grassroots level. Unfortunately, these dreams partially materialized and it was not fully completed. Right. Given the chance, I intend to push that agenda forward. Again, um, the Executive Council as it is, mm -hmm. it is not as if it is something which you go and articulate your vision and it's like, that is it. Okay. Because one, you are not the president. Right. Uh, two, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a committee or a board. Even now, the numbers have been reduced from 22 mm -hmm. to 12. Right. And we are fortunate to have a myriad of people aspiring to be football administrators and then working on the council. It's a unique blend yeah. because football is the only area that you have people in all walks of life engaging in. Yeah. So you have marketers, you have communicators, yeah. you have uh, lawyers, like yourself. lawyers like myself and all these things. But looking at it, it's, it's like I'm the only lawyer <laughs> as we speak now. <laughs> okay. So uh, if I look at uh, the premier division one, mm -hmm. the women's division, I'm the only lawyer. Right. And I think it is best because there are certain issues that when you are a lawyer and you are on the committee, mm -hmm. you know how to handle it. I'll give you an, one example. Okay. I didn't attend the Congress because my boss attended the con Congress on behalf of Proud United. Right. Because Division 1, you are required to take only one candidate there. On the floor of Congress, an issue arose as to the number 
who will constitute the board. Even though we previously discussed it at Gaka, mm -hmm. nobody knew how to articulate it. Right. So I sent them a message saying that this is what the law says. Okay. Per, the, per my understanding of the law, you can actually form a board with more, with a certain number. It is not the 12. You can only have it up to 12 if you don't have a constitution. Right. But if you have a constitution, you can go beyond that. Even then, if you take the forms as we have it, on the forms, that mm -hmm. is the forms for companies limited by guarantee, yeah. it is two and not more than 20 right. on the form itself. So there's exactly. no way 12 can be an automatic number as, right. as it is. Yeah. But there was nobody to articulate that view, so it passed. I arrived there, but it was too late. Okay. Even if, uh, and when there, I was even an observer, so I could not have. But if I was present and mm -hmm. said some, uh, this thing came up, I would have said it right. and pointed out what the law says. Right. The law is not in my bosom, but I, at least that is my understanding. And that's why, so that is, why, that is why it is very good mm -hmm. to have a lawyer on a board. Okay. If you look at most boards now, okay. in fact, they are looking for lawyers. Exactly. They are looking for lawyers to serve on their board. So if you have me and I'm volunteering my services, <laughs> I mean, you know my track record, you know my experience. Exactly. Why would you decide to uh, not to go for me? Lawyer, let's, let's, let's come now to um, uh, adjudication of issues at the FA. Yeah, it's, yeah. It has been a big problem. It is a big problem. Exactly. It is a big problem. It's, it's either it delays or something comes up, it doesn't work well yeah, for, see, for, for, for others. The FA, as I met in 2001, circa 2005, right. up to 2018, has gone, undergone a lot of transformation, especially with the disciplinary aspect. Right. Several times you've had to eschew certain things from the statutes because we want to push a certain agenda. All the agenda was to ensure a quick adjudication of the judicial uh, hearings, yeah. quick conclusion, quick resolution. If you are dissatisfied, go on appeal, appeal quick, quick, quick resolution. So over the years, we've brought measures to curtail that. Mm -hmm. But it seems those measures were not enough. And also, uh, with all due respect, how certain decisions went. Okay. The decisions sometimes did not follow precedence. Okay. And for clubs, when that happens, I'm a club man myself. Mm -hmm. My club was affected in all these things. It is like, oh, somebody has interest. That is why he wants it to happen. Assuming okay. a team plays a match sometimes in March, mm -hmm. he files a protest all right. Okay. The protest, for one or two reasons, gets lost. It's heard sometime in August. Okay. When the league is about uh, two matches to the end, right. and that is the time people are looking at relegation mm -hmm. and promotion. Yeah. So the agreed club will perceive and say that, oh, okay, you did that deliberately because you want to know where I am before you adjudicate. Mm -hmm. So whatever decision you come up with, if it does not go in my favor, I'm not happy, I'm going to court. Yeah. Other reasons where it, uh, that there are certain things which were supposed to be done administratively but the disciplinary committee ruled otherwise and then appeals and all these things. I believe that one, what is happening now is that per the statutes, the new statutes as we have, uh, members of the judicial body are supposed to be independent and they will be appointed on the floor of Congress. Right. So the executive council will recommend and it is Congress who approve them. Okay. Certain strict rules have been set, which I support fully. Okay. One of this is that you must not have had any dealing with any club for at least four years, okay. which I think is perfect. Okay. Because it is like, okay, I'm, I'm at Proud United. Mm -hmm. You know me. Mm -hmm. I've been in football for a long time. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I am no longer there. Mm -hmm. So you want me to, let's say, head the, uh, judicial, the judicial, one of the judicial bodies yeah. because of my um, knowledge. Let me put it that way. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is that I'm a football person, so I know people. The people who attempt to talk to you, oh, I have this case, mm -hmm. what can you do about it for me? Mm -hmm. They know that I will refuse, but that will not be that for want of trying. So to avoid everything, mm -hmm. take neutral people, people who have no idea, and then spell out the laws to them right. that this is what we want. We want fast adjudication of the matters. If a matter comes within five years, and I've seen it in some of the manifestos, mm -hmm. it is something that... I will support whoever becomes the president to push that agenda. Exactly. Quick resolution of the matter, and if you are dissatisfied. So, for instance, if a matter comes, it happens in England and all those things, we make reference to it. Mm -hmm. It should not be more than five to ten days right. for you to give a ruling. Exactly. If you can't, 
<laughs> then, then there is no point, with all due respect, yeah. serving on that committee, on that high level, because okay. those are the things which bring a lot of problems, and it's a question of image redemption for the FE. Right. People know, like, oh, this is my committee, everybody expects something to come up this way, because this is what we all saw, like, let's say, mm -hmm. bribery. Somebody says that, I saw this feely feely happening. Yeah. The, the thing is that the judicial world. The ruling is not coming, and then it's like one match to the end, or then uh, a strange ruling comes. It's like, oh, but at the executive committee, your hands are tied because the judicial bodies are independent. Yeah. But at the same time, if you have certain laws laid down and they follow, yeah. there's no way <laughs> these things will happen. Even if it's going to happen, it will be minimized. Right. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm still putting the law questions to you because, I mean, yeah. I've, I've not had an opportunity to ask anybody. Yeah, we can but... have more time to talk about <laughs> law, but um, at another time, yeah. we, I, I'm, I'm always but, available. But yeah. Exactly. But let's just, let's just get into, uh, you're talking about uh, grassroots football and, and, you know, helping these age group national teams to yeah. get to a certain level. Yeah. I mean, getting on the executive council is like um, a good step into making your points known yes. at the highest level yes. to try to get it there. Yes. I mean, how do you want to see our youth football and our, and our age group teams go in the next few years? Well, I think that first, the FA must have a clear identified policy for youth. That this is how youth football should be. At the under-15 level, I was privileged to uh, know FIFA stands on because FIFA has an entire youth policy. So we adopted part of the policy and saw to the implementation. But like I mentioned, it got truncated along the way. Okay. This time, I will want to have that revisited, right. strengthened, and then ensure that certain things, measures are put in place because they lay more emphasis on the technical ability of a player at a certain level. Exactly. It starts with when the player has to go into a game, the type of games envisaged for the player at that level up to a certain time. And it is systematic. So if you start, it's a pyramid form. Okay. So you start at a certain age, mm -hmm. you graduate, you move. But in our situation, you have people who are plus 18 who want to play um, juvenile football under 15. Yeah. It is not proper. It, yeah. Those things must not be en entertained. Yeah. That is why I strongly supported the MRI as a, a, as a, a means for testing the age and getting the right sort of people. Right. You need to get the right sort of people, the right age group, mm -hmm. and, and rather make sure that they are well, uh, they are given the best of nutrition exactly. so that they grow with their game. It's not fair to take people who are already grown, mm -hmm. who you cannot imbibe any knowledge, and will want to parry them as you. When you get to a certain level, they suffer. Yeah. So we must have that pyramid one. Again, we, we, we looked at a national under-15 league mm -hmm. at that time. We played it successfully, and uh, I think one academy, Utrecht Academy, won. Yeah. The nucleus of that team was a team which graduated into the under-17 but another problem also we had at under 17 level is that if you play at under 17 mm -hmm. and you, go, you don't go to Africa, everybody forgets you. <laughs> so these players played uh, during their liaison time. Yeah. They went to play the Wafu in Niger. Mm -hmm. They didn't qualify. So once you didn't qualify for Africa, it means that you will not qualify for the world because yeah. the World Cup uh, qualifiers was from the Africa. The first four teams go. Right. As we speak now, they played the Africa, uh, the, the Afghan under 17, Cameroon won. Mm -hmm. It was not news in Ghana. Right. And as I speak now, mm -hmm. 25th, next week, okay. but this weekend, right. they are starting the Under-17 World Cup. How many sports stations have mentioned that? <laughs> None, because Ghana is not participating. So right. it's not an interest. So that is why those boys, they were a very good set of boys. Now they are all lost. Listen, but there was even a data to follow them and ensure mm -hmm. that they were like they were properly maintained and all these things. But these are Things that once you leave, it's like it dies out. Yeah. So issues like this, I think that it has to be revisited. Right. We also need proper competitions. It can be festivals, it mm -hmm. can be leagues. I know that FIFA and CAF even have more of such competitions coming up. Right. And we have to tap into that. Yeah, I think we are, we are running out of time. But um, yes. finally, um, uh, going around, speaking to the delegates, are you confident of getting in? 
Yes, I am confident. I've spoken to uh, delegates in various ways, some through WhatsApp chats, some through messages, okay. uh, some through calls, calls okay. some personally. Right. Because, you see, Division 1 is quite unique. Division okay. 1 is national mm -hmm. because you have clubs stretching as far as Wa Sunta, mm -hmm. then you have Paga Crocodile. Yeah. You come down mm -hmm. and you have Proud United, which is in the south. Mm -hmm. You have Sky, which is in the south. Yeah. You have Abuzum, the Weavers. You have all these clubs. Right. How do you link up yeah. with them? So there are various means when you have a chance, you talk to them. And listen. But my message has been simple. Yeah. They know me, they know what I stand for and what I can do. You need men like me to be on the committee to help push the FE agenda to help the FA achieve a new image and that is my message to them they should try me and they will not ever regret yeah thanks very much for joining us yeah uh, thank you too <laughs> well that's a uh, lawyer Kukui, yeah, there, uh, getting on to the executive council of the ghana football association the elections is on thursday the 24th of october bringing us to the end of the sports segment this morning we'll be